so we're gonna do a little bit of a history walk today. I'm feeling nostalgic. We're gonna start from the perch where I drink at. As you know, for years I've hung out on the Sixth Street Bridge, but now that it's gone, you know, pretty much I'm here drinking my beer at the end perch. We're right here in between all of the freeways, right at here at uh, basically this last little stump of Whittier Boulevard. And we're gonna be making our way to see my family in La Mirada. My grandparents are from Mexico, so I'm taking some video around the neighborhood um, for us to talk about. And uh, because it's my 40th birthday tomorrow, I'm, a, I'm feeling especially nostalgic. So we're gonna go on a walk today, but I just need to finish a little bit more of this beer and we'll be on our way. Okay, ya se acabó mi pisto, so we're gonna be making our way. As you can see, it's like rush hour right now. So we're gonna head back. And we're gonna cover a few spots that I really wanna show that I think tell the story of my family. Now just down there, beyond there is the flats and uh, you know, the story of my family and you know, kind of their history with uh, becoming landowners and uh, merchants in the flats you know really begins in about the early 1930s but we're gonna go back a little bit older than that so my world all begins kind of intersect right here at Whittier and Boyle and um, you know my friends hang out on the corner over here I hang out at the end but I want us to see this building across the street. We're gonna go take a look at it real quick. From what my grandma tells me and what I gather from uh, locals is they tell me this was the location of Cookie's Cafe. Uh, this is where my grandma basically used to hang out in front of the jukebox and uh, she tells me that her sisters would come saying that my grandma you know was coming to uh, was coming together so the family actually, their story in Boyle Heights originates just a few steps from here. So we're going to go and we're going to trace our steps back to tell the early immigrant story of my family. So the family lore goes this way, that about 1896, the family came to settle in Boyle Heights. Um, the Garcia family had come up from Guanajuato. The Lozano family, um, I'm not sure originally where they're from. I know that uh, my great grandma, they were born in, uh, she was born in Chihuahua. But my family came here to settle in between the Los Angeles River, which is just beyond there, and uh, the canyon. The hollow, Fickett Hollow, which was just that direction. And we're gonna go take a look at the area that became the original family settlement. Well, I want you to take a good look at this right now. As we approach that, keep it in mind as we start to tell this story. So here we go. Now we're coming upon Boyle and Garnet. Some of these old original brick buildings still remain here. I have an idea of what, how some of these locations But instead of uh, guessing, I actually want to rely on grandma and grandpa to uh, tell me about what was here without uh, you know, influencing their thoughts. I really love hearing what they come up with um, and what they remember just off the top of their heads that they haven't remembered in a long time. 
And what we're doing is that we're actually walking south on Boyle, like we're heading towards Olympic. And we're gonna head over to the block where um, the family actually had their first settlement when they came here, when the family first came. And I think it was always common for my family, like a lot of Mexican Americans families, for everyone to live close to each other, up against each other in a tight knit family community. And my, fa my family actually, their first settlement was right here on Opal Street. Right here on Opal Street. And this is what it looks like today. And uh, so the family came and they settled here in this area. All around the area, the family had come and um, lived as one tight unit. Grandma, grandpa, aunts, uncles, um, you know, cousins and everyone growing up together in a tight-knit community. And um, they would live here together. Um, my family, I think, even though they were pretty well off, you know, after they had settled here, I think one of the reasons that they came and they stayed was because they met other people from Guanajuato, um, you know, other Mexican immigrants who uh, they related to when they decided to stay. And um, as landowners, they also rented out to um, the other working class Latinos who had, you know, Mexican Americans who had come into this neighborhood. And um, the settlement was just past the end of uh, where this block ends today. Now, why a lot of the Mexican Americans came starting around uh, 1896, around the start of uh, the 20th century as well, was in order to come as laborers, in order to work for the Simons Brickyard, which was just actually, um, actually just began, I'm um, just past this block here. And um, a lot of people had come up from the family's home state of Guanajuato in order to dig out um, clay for bricks, for bricks like this. What happens is that um, because of the wash of the Los Angeles River, um, there was just tons of clay, at, at minimum in most areas, 30 feet of clay that could be dug out and made into um, bricks. And um, the Simons Brickyard was about 50 feet away from the back end of where the family settlement was. And um, it, what happened, we actually had some, some um, relatives who married into the family who worked there. Um, but um, it was a Jewish owned brickyard, one of the largest owned brick company, which the largest and most sophisticated brickyards ever. And it drew a lot of uh, Mexican Americans to come work. But it's a very interesting story. So what happens is that Throughout here, basically, what we're looking down into, you're looking down into the Los Angeles interchange where the 10 freeway goes. This entire indentation, this oil, el oil, um, most people don't know that this was all dug up in order to harvest the clay from here. Now what happens is that the family continuously lived here, they lived together. Um, until the start of um, the five freeways, when the five freeways came through, um, it basically chopped through right through here. The family's house was just maybe about 40 feet from here on the other side of this. But as you see, because of the excavation to make the freeways, um, the land where the original family settlement is um, no more. It just goes, just jettisons out into... Um, into space, into this indentation that has been dug out. But I wanted to come here today, um, you know, to take a good look at, um, you know, what remains here um, at the end of the block. But yeah, so, you know, when I talk to a lot of Mexican Americans who grew up in the neighborhood, and we refer to the area and through here as El Hoyo, most people don't know that, um, you know, it was uneven because it was dug out in order to dig um, out the clay into uh, 
a lot of the clay that was dug out from here would eventually make it into the buildings downtown. Um, so you look in a lot of theaters, the Orpheum Theater, the Palace Theater, you'll find Simon's bricks that came from actually right here. <laughs> the clay earth that was taken from here um, was taken to help build up Los Angeles. Los Angeles was built up with a mixture of Jewish ingenuity and uh, Mexican hard labor, um, which is just a fascinating story, which I really want to come and continue to explore. But here I am on Opal Street, basically um, looking at um, what is the last remainders of, uh, you know, the block where my family history starts at the end of the 19th century, at the start of the 20th century. Now what's interesting is, is that right here, this building materials place, kind of, you know, feleteria that we have here, that um, I guess takes a lot of old stuff for recycling and uh, it's amazing to see a lot of the different bricks, the old branded bricks that came from surrounding yards around here. There was also the Los Angeles Brickyard, St. Louis Brickyard, Davidson Brickyard. And I think we actually have, yes we do, we have some Davidson bricks right here. One of the things that I'm not really able to place necessarily is uh, the location of the Protestant church. Um, there was a Protestant church around here. Um, as well as, um, I want to get a precise location of where the original, um, of the original Santa Isabel school, um, because that was the early school that most of my family went to. Actually, a great deal of money was given by um, the Garcia family in order to found it. it was right here off of Boyle I and mean, it was destroyed to make way for the 5 freeway and later they moved over to where it's at now over at Whittier and Soto but as a kid whenever I would go through here whenever we would go through these ways my mom would always remind me um, where the family houses were. And she would always, you know, kind of point at, oh, you know, that's where great grandma's house is. That's where, you know, that's where, you know, uh, grandma's house, that's where Nana's house was at. And, you know, all of these things. And it's been part of my narrative forever. I mean, I can't go across town to this day without my mom reminding me about it. But it is part of our story. We do remember um, displacement. Um... You know, is an ongoing story in this neighborhood. And to uh, kind of illustrate that, we're going to go on to one of our next locations. We're coming upon Boyle and Eighth. It's starting to get dark, but here we are. We're at Soto and Eighth. And um, so what happens is that when the five freeways started coming through with, um, you know, they started um, taking land with eminent domain in order to make on um, the first of the freeways that was coming through the family actually lost um, several houses several several houses that you know they had and um, there was also many other Mexicano families that were um, landowners that owned several houses and um, as they were taking a lot of the land for uh, you know basically uh, you know public domain to use for these um, freeways that were getting lowballed so my great-grandfather Marcelino Garcia, you know, really encouraged uh, my great-great-grandfather Joe Garcia and a lot of the other uh, Mexicano landowners to actually fight for, uh, you know, a better, uh, you know, a better price. So eventually all of the um, local landowners, they pulled together their resources, hired some attorneys and um, were able to get a little bit better um, of settlements for their property. So what happens is that the family eventually moved over to the other properties. 
here in Boyle Heights. And though they had properties in the flats, they you know, were really closely connected to the other families of the area. So they came um, just a little bit over to Soto Street, to 8th and Soto. And the family regrouped. And, uh, and the Soto Street house, that's where my grandmother was born. Where my grandmother was born. And uh, unfortunately, I can't show you that place. Um, we're almost directly on top of it right now. Because when they decided to make the next part of the freeways that came through this area, the 60 freeway, the second track of family home, of the family's homes were destroyed and we're actually looking directly on the spot um, where my grandmother's family home was. That is the exchange going towards the 60 freeway and directly at this spot where this on-ramp was, this was my, grandfa my grandmother's birth home now it's a very small neighborhood I want you to look up where we were looking back from Opal we're actually looking over there so they didn't move too terribly far um, but twice the family was displaced in order to make way for the freeways And um, again, you know, it's something that um, I've been hearing about my whole life and it's a, um, a story that I keep hearing over and over again, um, repeated by my other friends who, you know, their roots are here in this neighborhood. And, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a deep history and uh, I hope that in the near future, I'm going to be able to actually fully document this. Uh, but I just had to walk. and feel it and try to, to the best that I can, reconnect it with my roots where my family originated <laughs> right there where they retreated to and were forced away from again And now on my way to the southeast side, we're going to stop at another spot. To help bring this all together. And then maybe in the next few weeks, we'll get over to the flats and I'll start to tell about um, all of that story, which, you know, is really unknown to most of my family. I'm really excited about doing that, too. It would be a real shame if I came through here without showing you Fickett Street on the south side of the freeways. And again, I want to remind us that the indentation that we have here is partially canyon and partially because of how much clay and earth was taken out in order to make, uh, in order to make the, um, the bricks. And, you know, I didn't really know that until recently when I was kind of talking about that and my grandma was talking about, you know, the people who lived in Fickett Street. And, um, you know, we're talking about Fickett Hollow and, um, you know, my grandpa, all of a sudden, he, you know, just exclaimed, it wasn't always like that. They dug it out. And um, no one really understood what he was talking about at the time. I don't even think that they really believed him because he has, uh, you know, uh, age-related dementia that, you know, didn't know. Um, but the truth is, is that, uh, uh, you know, we found that when I started looking up, and everything. Well, first I had to ask him. I was like, Grandpa, who dug it up? Why did they dig it up? He's all the brick people. Simon's Brickyard. And I looked it up and I have learned about the Simon's Brickyard and uh, how that area was basically dug out. And um, an entire vadrio was created as people moved in. So here we are. We're at 8th and Mott. We're right in front of um, Katie's store. This used to be Katie's store. Um... The Bonilla family owned this store in the house next by, next door, and uh, that's basically a 
uh, represents one of the first families that moved into the just changing neighborhood, the Bonillas, uh, coming in from the flats. Now, right here as neighbors, 1163, this house right here. Um, this is eventually where um, my great grandfather, Marcelino Garcia, my great grandma Jesse, and um, my great aunts and uncles, and my grandma um, would come to would come to reside. And we're coming here late in the day. Um, but this is basically what the neighborhood looks like today. <laughs> so yeah, I was talking with some of the local residents and the neighbors right now who were so excited to see me um, out here um, telling our stories from this side of town. Um, Sears building behind there and on the projects. There were this waving wood over there, Strata Courts over there, but uh, as I head back to see my family, I'm going to carry back some of these family memories and, um, you know, try to uh, spark some memories in order to continue to tell our story. Okay, I'm out, guys.